Fatima and I'm talking to you from Newfoundland, Canada. Uh, normally, I try to make a, a podcast once a month. It, it's a good one. It's good for me too. Uh, but I got shingles. Um, it was like February 20th. And I thought it was just a pain in my back, like a, a muscle pain. Then my husband saw a rash. Then I thought that I had been bitten by a spider. So because I didn't have any blisters, and when I looked for shingles, they normally have blisters, it took me a week to, or more to really figure it out that it was shingles. And then when I finally started taking medication, it took me a while to recover. So I didn't have a lot of knitting. And I had it on my back and it comes to the front. So knitting Portuguese style, you move the finger a lot. And I think it's because it's a nerve, it was connected and it was hard. So I tried to knit because addiction is terrible, right? So I tried to knit uh, English style, like holding the side very stiff and just doing the thing, but it was too slow. And even though uh, after a little bit, it would uh, hurt. So, so that's why it took me longer this time to, to make a podcast. And I thought I didn't have much, but I have a lot to talk. Um, so I will start with, uh, uh, other than that, we just had a few storms. Um, we didn't go anywhere, of course, and but but I'm back to normal, to my usual old age, pain aches and pains. So everything is good here. Um, so I'm gonna start with my finished project. I finished the shift cow from Andrea Mori. It's the first pattern that I do from her, and I thought that it was amazing. Uh, it it made me think: How do designers think of the patterns because I really like and this is like um, beginning of February I start washing my my skeins that I had hand spun and it was just by by luck that I, I had the orange skein and this green and blue skein together to dry and I said wow they look good because my plan was to use something else for this cow, but I really liked it and I like the blue, it's it's really nice. It took me a long time to knit and I don't know if it is because uh, it I started it in the first week of shingles and then I couldn't knit for long or if it's because you do, um, it's mosaic knitting, right? So you do a lot of slip stitch and then it takes longer for, for it to grow. But I really liked it. Um, the thing is, she says for you to block it while it's, uh, you, you do it back and forth. And she says to block it before you put it together. But I wanted to see it together. I wanted to have something finished. And I, I did that. And, and I said, maybe I won't block because I didn't want it to, to grow too much. And I thought that it would be nice to put here to walk. But when I walked, the wind here is, is strong. So it, the wind just came through. So I am going to block it. I might even undo the, the sewing that I did because it's just a little bit and block it and do it again. But it's beautiful. Um, I really like it. It's just that for here, I need something that is warmer. <laughs> But I really like it. I like the color combinations. I like the design. Really enjoyed it. So this is my first um, finish object. This is my Even Doom from Kate Davis. And, and it's a nice thing. This I had done long ago. It was a fleece that Linis from my guild in Ontario gave me. And I hand spun everything. But it's coarse. And, and this... Uh, but it's not bad. If I'm wearing with something underneath, and that's the case, it feels good. I love the design. I love Kate Davis' design, so so it's all good. My second finish object is the Tinder that I made for my husband. It is a nice sweater. Um, I wish I had used another uh, 
wool because this had a lot of synthetic in it and and it's a very light like almost see-through uh, stitch with this with the gauge that I got but it's very light and my husband liked light sweaters I, I made some beautiful sweaters for him that are thick and heavy and he doesn't wear them so I think he's gonna wear this and so that was a good one um, I think I will try to do this pattern again just because I didn't follow uh, completely the the pattern but it's a nice pattern I like it it's top down so I could put on him and, and try it while I was doing to see if I needed to increase more or not and he likes it and I and I do like it too but I might do it for one of the men in my life my son or my grandson because my grandson is now 14. The other finished project is the pair of socks so last time I showed I was here and I wanted some texture in it so I did the same stitch as the tinder that you do one row knit purl knit purl knit purl the second row is only knit and i have to say that it's not the prettiest but it's it's gonna be practical and i do like uh ribbing sort of a ribbing on the on the top because it is um elastic and then it will hug to your leg so another pair of socks. So this is it for my finished objects in, in knitting. And I'm going to work, show my work in progress. So I finished all the squares for the Martin Story um, blanket. And I added one row. So it's a little bit larger than it would be. And I added one row on the top, on the bottom. Honestly, I'm not loving it. I'm not loving uh, putting it together. I was thinking of doing, uh, Fleece and Harmony is doing um, a blanket. It's bigger squares and it's two squares a month. And uh, it, it, they're pretty but I don't think so so no but I have everything done um, I have to put it together the other thing is I'm thinking because in the pattern in the original pattern you have to pick up stitches uh, and knit both one side then you pick up stitch and knit the other side and then you pick up stitch and knit some rows there I am thinking that maybe I'll do some crochet because I think it's easier and then I can just go in the round but I'm not loving it so it's a good experience because I know I'll never do a blanket that needs to be sewed together again but all the the blocks are done finished um, the fiber is nicer than, than I thought it would be, but really, um, not for me, but I'll try to finish it <laughs> and maybe give it to a child. I don't know if my son or my daughter would like it, but anyway, so <clears throat> then another project that I have been working a little bit in it and, and I'm kind of liking it. It's just that because it's very thick, I think it's number 10 millimeters needle, it, it's tiring. So I work a little bit every time and that's okay. And what I liked is that the, there are different blues, you see, like this is one blue, this is lighter, and this is even darker than this blue that is there. And I'm just adding it. And because it's hand spun, I just, split and, and put it together and and I'm liking it a lot so now you can start to have an idea of how wide it is 
And this is going for my daughter. She's thinking about moving together with her boyfriend. So I thought this is a good thing for her to have. And, and it's going to be wide enough. And as I said before, it's very stretchy. So I really like it. And it's growing nicely. And I, I really like the transition of the colors because you have to really look. I don't know. I like it. Now I'm seeing the transitions more. Depending on the light, you, you hardly see them. So I have different uh, blues and I want to use them all. And my idea here is also to um, free space in my stash because this yarn is uh, where is it? Here. It's thick, so the balls are very thick for a little bit of yarn. So the sooner I finish it, the better. But I do a little bit, and then I stop and get another project with another needle because it's really thick. So I have this much to finish this blue, and then. Where is it? Oh, this is the same blue. But then I'll go to this blue instead. So that I have the the blue color variating during throughout the blanket. So that you don't get one one spot only with one color. So this is another work in progress. Then I have this work in progress. That is from the Viking book. And I'm almost done. Almost done. It's, it's funny because I love cables and I used to knit a lot of cables uh, in my, when I was a young woman. And even my first sweaters for me, I all had cables, but I'm not in my cable phase. So it, it's a little bit harder. It's a beautiful cable and it's just on the sleeves. Um, again, this pattern, and I think almost all the patterns in the book are knitted uh, bottom up. I don't feel very comfortable bottom up because I'm always afraid um, I'm not going to get the proper lens of the project. So when I look at this, I thought this doesn't look uh, big enough, but I even put it on me, me high to try after I, I put it together because I was ready to undo it and it looks right. So I don't know, but I have 40 centimeters here and in the pattern he was saying 52 centimeters. So I have 12 centimeters less, but I think it's because he's thinking that because I'm doing the size number, the one size uh, smaller than the last size, the biggest size. He's thinking that he's a very tall person. It's just that Mihai now has a little bit more side, like like me, like normally most, not all, but most older people, you grow sideways. So I hope this will look good. Um, I'm using Knit for Olive. And I'm doing one of mohair and one of their, I think this is more like a DK yarn. And it's, it's comfortable on him. It's not big. It has a little bit ease. So I think it's going to be nice. And, and it's the, the braid is really, really nice. So what I do with this is, because it's a book that I have, I took a picture of, oh, normally I take pictures, but in this case, I didn't take a picture. I scanned the page that I wanted. So I saved it as PDF. Let me just show. And so I scanned the page. Hold on. And then I know where I am. And I always do like this. Every time I do a row, when I get, I, I do the row. And then when I get to the stitch again, then I go one up. So I would put it, like when I get to the next row, 
I would do this and stop here. So I see everything that went down and I would do what I am here. So, and you can read easily. It's, it's a very easy, easy to follow cable pattern because it works with pros and, and neats. So you know that whenever there is a pearl, the pearl part will go underneath and the, the neat will be on the top, so in the front of the, the project. So if there is a pearl, you're going to put it on the back. If there is a neat, you're going to put it on the front. The only thing is there are some times that you do neat and neat, and that, that's the only time you have to look and see what goes in front or in the, la in the back. But it's really beautiful. I have to say that when I, when I touch this yarn like this, it doesn't feel um, that nice, particularly nice. But when I look at this fabric, it feels really nice. And I don't know after um, blocking if it's going to smooth even more. But I think it's really nice. I really like the sweater and I think he likes it too. So hopefully soon, because I have a lot of stuff that I want to start. And I have a lot of projects to finish that I'm not bothering right now. So this is another work in progress. Uh, then I had to do some exams. And this is the last work in progress that I'm working on lately. And, and I went to, to the store to get some other yarn for a, another sweater that I, I, I wanted to knit. And I'll talk about it. And I saw these two skeins and I said, two balls. And I said, wow, this is opal. And they're so beautiful. And I think this one I had bought it out before. <laughs> or it was very close to this from Oppo. And this is, let me see, what is this? Um, Oppo Sweet, and it's color 11267. 11267. And I think it's very, very beautiful. So I am, as usual, I like to do the socks two at a time, but in separate needles. And I finished the, the, the heel on this one. I'm ready to, to go on on the top. And this one, I'm working on the heel right now. The other thing is that uh, Cristina from a Portuguese podcast uh, called A Cerca de Tudo, she said that she likes to, to make the heel, to go on with the heel a little bit longer, uh, to, to make this a little bit longer, right? And I like that. But the thing is, when I was doing the socks, I did one one foot and I said, oh, I'm going to do like her. I'm going to increase a little, make it a little bit bigger. But then when I was doing the second one, I forgot. So they are a little bit uh, like two rows less on this, on this sock. The, the heel is, is smaller. So to avoid this, I stopped right where I would stop. And then when I finish this, I work them a little bit on this, a little bit on this, so that they are exactly the same. This is how I'm going to guarantee that the socks will be the same. So, and it's a vanilla sock. I think it's a perfect project to, to take with me when I am in the car driving uh, and stuff because it's not uh, too big. So, then I, my hand spun. So I showed you, I think, a bunch of um, bobbins that I had done. And this is Merino, 
with a little bit of alpaca that I got from my friend Michelle. It's a gray alpaca, light gray. And um, some of them have a little bit of mohair. And some, and they all have a little bit of silk. And I did this here. I had, I had made the bats long ago, but I didn't spin them. And as a matter of fact, this one is the same bat, but I had, um, I had spun it thin long ago and I forgot the bobbin. So I found the bobbin because I was separating the stuff from the spinning wheel that I had this. And I found the bobbin and I did a, a cable ply or Navajo ply. And, and as you can see, I got a very thick, thin three ply yarn and I like it a lot. But when I was spinning this one, I was doing a, a thicker yarn and I decided to go, I didn't know if I was going to do a three ply, but I decided to do two ply. Three ply is normally my, my go-to kind of yarn. It's round, it's, uh, I think it's, it's more stable. I do like three ply, but I decided to do a two ply and I'm very happy because it's very, it, it is very soft and it's nice. I do like it a lot. So if you see that my two ply, oops, my two ply is way thicker than my three ply. And this is the same fiber. But because it was also um, uh, last twist in it, you can see the colors of the the fiber better. I think here they blended more when I'm spinning it. But I'm very happy with both yarns and, and I know I'm going to do another fake cow because when Paula was here, she loved my fake cow and she used it all the time. And before she left, she left it in the house. I just don't know where. And I saw it and I can't find it. And for here, because the fake owl, um, the fake owl has four layers, because of two layers of color work, so four layers of fabric, it's perfect for the wind here. And you can easily put it here and it stays where it is. Let me just show you the fake owl. So this is a free pattern. Uh, oh my. This is a free pattern. Come on. Okay. Yeah. So this is a, uh, the fake owl is a free pattern. And it is from, um, where is she? Come on. It is from a, a Woo Week book. And she just changed the the pattern that was there. When you want, you can't find it. And and that's what I'm. Oh, here it is. So that's what I'm planning to do. I'm planning to to change the pattern again. Paula wanted one for her. Just not with blue and yellow, even though she wore it all the time. She was here for three weeks. But it's very good for the wind here. It's it's amazing. So I want to do this um, cow again with this yarn and another yarn that I had now washed. Because that's the thing. I spin, 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 and I leave it there, and I don't wash. And you have to, to finish, really finish a spun yarn, you have to wash it. Some people will, like, hit it badly. Uh, I just let it dry on the top of a towel for a while or on the hanger thing and then and then that's it so I don't put pressure I don't block it or anything on the yarn I just wash it so I have uh, and I have another bobbin of this so I have two bobbins of the two ply and two bobbins on the three ply and then I also have three bobbins this is the smallest 
one of this that I have, and I have two of this. So my initial plan was to make a, a shift out of these collars. And I, I bought by mistake, but I, I asked my husband to buy me the, the shawl. So maybe I'll use that for that, for the night shift shawl, but I'm not sure yet. Um, and in the same fiber, it's just that this one had more red uh, merino than this. So this, when I was blending, so I still have three bobbins to, to do it. I might get like two balls, two cakes of yarn like that. But this I still have is the same yarn, but the color is, is different. So, so that's, so that's finished yarn. Then I had, I have still stuff from, from my Rhinebeck 2019, and this is one of them. So this is a spinning work in progress. This is from uh, the Sheep Shed and Mountain View Farm. It's Jacob. And Jacob is is an interesting ship. It's a small ship. Ship. <laughs> Let me see if I get it here. And it in in the nineteen something year, they were they were decoration ship ships. So they used to have them on on the farms not on the farms, on the castles, because they are very pretty. And I just want to get one that I saw before. They have black and white in them. They have like four horns. And look at this cutie pie. So this is a Jacob. I got a Jacob fleece, and the, the original Jacob is very coarse. I had a lamb fleece still somewhere that needs to be I washed it but I didn't card it and the black is coarser than the white that's the normal thing every time you have a ship that has two colors the the black is normally coarser and my fleece is very coarse I can feel it when I'm working with it this I got was a, a processed fiber so it was like a top and and I just spun it and it's softer because in North America what they are doing is they are breeding them for for softness so when they are going to breed they choose the the rams that are softer right so that's why I have a fleece that feels very nice to me but I had only 250 grams that gave me six bobbins, the lace bobbin of this. What I'm planning to do is I have a lot of Corydale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend two singles of Corydale and one single of this Jacob and then ply them together. So the Corydale is soft. It's not as soft as the Merino because it's, it's, um, it's a breed that was developed uh, with Merino and Laster together. So, so this is going to be, I think it's going to be nice because it's going to give me a barb of pole or something like that. But when I dye it, it's going to be nice. So this is something that I want to dye. Um, and I have a lot of this. So right now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to work all the bobbins that I have in my aura uh, filled up. And then once they are filled up, I'll start uh, making, plying them. And then I'll change my spinning wheel because I use my, my hands and to ply because I have the woolly winder and I think it's much better. It fits more in, in each bobbin. I just have one plying bobbin. But it feels better 
you don't stop so many times so it goes faster and it feels uniformly so i really like that so i will blend this and then i'll start i'll change the the plying um bobbins and stuff in my ensign and i start spinning there too so the next time i spin i'll have all my bobbins from the aura filled up and all my nine bobbins of the hands and also filled up so that when I ply I can just ply. Then I did some dyeing and I had this is the same Corydale right so it was white and I had food dye I used food dye to dye this and the food dye is normally going to give you a brighter uh, blue so I added a little bit of black, not a lot, but a little bit of black because I wanted a darker blue. And I got this blue that I really, really like. So, so this is the same uh, dye, but this is Merino. There is no Corydeo in here. And this is Corydeo. That's another thing. You can use the same dye in two fleeces. It's going to give you two different colors, two different shades. I was... Uh, when I was doing my course in Halliburton, I had, a, after I finished it, I saw that I had a lot of little bits left over of different breeds that we were working with. And then I threw them all in a pot with green and they came all different shades of green. So that was really cool. So naturally this, that is Corydeo, would come different than most of this fiber that is um, that is merino, but I do have some alpaca and and some uh, silk in here. But my point in dyeing it blue is because I wanted to use this skein from lace le lichen and lace, and I got this at the um, Fiber Fest, Prince Edward Island Fiber Fest. And she is from uh, Nova Scotia. And I really love this. And I thought this will be good together. So I got a pattern, a new pattern, because I don't have enough on my clue, cue. Um, and the pattern is from Isabel Kramer. So no, not here. Sorry. Isabel Kramer uh, had her birthday and she had a special. And I got the Kalias. And I really like this pattern. I think I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to do crop or if I'm going to do longer. I saw on Ravelry a few different uh, sizes, like longer and shorter. I do really like this, and I think that I might be able to get even maybe two of this if I do crop, one for me, one for my daughter, because I have three skeins of this, or four. I don't have them all here, but I have a bunch. I think I have four skeins of this, some smaller and at least three the same, and that must be like 200 grams. Honestly, I, I didn't count the, how many yards or meters and this one is 459 yards so I think I'll have enough for that sweater for sure because it's simple it just has some made some pearls but you know so I think it's gonna look good I have a feeling and it's gonna darker darken my my blue a little bit and that's exactly what I want. So let me see. Uh, so this is Abel. I don't want Abel. I want single. And I think I, I'll be able to use for that sweater. And I'll be able to use it anyway because if I think if my gauge doesn't match. I'll just see if I need to do a bigger size. A bigger size is hard for me. but <laughs> Or a smaller size, depending on how big the cage is. 
then I did another dime. And this, I had uh, got two chairs and I just went around and made a, a, a bigger skein and I dyed it in different. So I'm not sure how it's going to come out. And I was thinking of maybe using this with a solid yarn um, and do a color work. So again, it's going to be thick um, and variate the colors. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with that, but I must have like 200 grams or more of yarn here. This is a three ply yarn. Then, oh, then in January, I was going through my Instagram and that's such a tricky thing, right? And I found a picture. I, I'm afraid now to look, watch podcasts and stuff because I find so many beautiful stuff and I want it. And I think that emotionally I needed some comfort. So I got this pattern. That is the Chine Flocon or Flocon. That is snowflakes. Let me see if I have uh, another. So this picture, where is it? Here. Is a big on it. And I loved it. And I wanted it uh, on the yarn that it was made because I want to try some yarns. So I got. I ordered it online. It's uh, in the U.S. It's called Shetland Wool and Spun, but it is not really Shetland. It is what is the content? Let me just see here. It's spun in the U.S. by Harris uh, Harrisville Design Wool and Spun. In New England, New England, and it doesn't say here, but but it's it's a different kind of wool. Mm, it's funny, it doesn't say in the label, or oh, maybe here inside. Let me check, because I thought Shetland is normally my experience with Shetland, not the hand spun, because I hand spun some Shetland, and they were quite nice. They were not harsh uh, but when I see the the Jameson Smith I think it's quite quite uh, uh, rustic so let me see no they don't say here but I, I checked it out and I think it has some merino in it and something else I don't know why they don't put here they just say 100% virgin wool Maybe they use more stuff. But anyway, so I got the black and I thought it was um, a gray, a white, but it's in reality a gray. It's not that soft. You can feel it. So it's a little bit rustic. Um, but yeah, I love the sweater and I don't mind because I always wear my sweaters on top of something. So even if it's coarse, it's going to be okay. So I got all the balls to make this sweater. Oh, yeah. Not all. I left a few without rolling. So I, I, in February, I was making balls of my sweaters, of my skeins. I washed, I made balls, and this is because... I wanted to exercise a little bit, so I did that. And this is what it comes. Um, I really would like to see. It just says natural wool yarns carded and spun in our meal. But it's not telling me what it is. Anyway, I think it's beautiful. So this is something I plan to start. I, I bought it and I was waiting and I was going to start immediately. But then I got shingles and shingles derailed me a lot. So I stopped. 
then I was watch Fleece and Harmony. And um, it's so interesting because Heather Nolan is, um, she has a podcast. If you look for Heather Nolan, um, you're going to find. She is from Newfoundland. And I heard about her from um, The Knitting Stew. And and then I, I went to look for her because she lives in Newfoundland, right? And she's a, a young woman. And I saw her podcast, the last two, and I, I saw her patterns and I liked it. But I saw that she was starting to, to do designs. And then I was watching Fleece and Harmony. And Simone was wearing one of her designs. And I thought it was beautiful. I really like her color work. And then I decided to go to Ravelry and check. So Heather Nolan has beautiful color work. And I decided that I wanted to do it. And we went to, to St. John's for something. And I went to my wool yarn store because I thought that they sold the Cumbria, Co-Cumbria. That is the yarn that she used for here. And I didn't find so I found uh, in the same weight, that's Aaron weight, the um, Briggs & Little. Briggs & Little is a very affordable yarn, but it's, it's rustic, very rustic. And I, my plan was to do something for my son, and then I don't know if he's going to wear rustic. But so I thought, you know, I can wear this to make a blanket in any case. And it was affordable, so it's all good. But I bought enough. I even started the collar. The collar in the pattern is double. But because it's coarse, I thought, meh, no, I'm not going to do double. Here, I'll just do a single one. I think it would be better. And the other thing is, um, my favorite person in the wool trends told me to... Um, that some people wash it with the uh, wool wash and then let it dry and it gets a little bit softer. Honestly, I don't see much difference. I wash the gray and when I wash the gray, I don't know if it's because I put on warm water, a lot of dye came out. So, so it's something to be aware of. And then what I think is that when I have a yarn that I'm afraid of, of running, I I will do what Arnie and Carlos do if I if I block it. I will block it with the iron and I'll put a towel in between just to be sure that the dye will not run from the bottom up and things like that. But yeah, so I got this. It's supposed to be a, a quick one. So let's see when I'm going to get to it. And then because I was looking for the Cumbria yarn and uh, I thought the Wool Trends had it, but they don't have it. So I checked the Cumbria yarn near me. And then I found that in Carbonier, there is a very nice wool store. It's called, I think, Seaside um, cafe in, in yarn store and it's in Carbonier and they they do have the the Cocumbria but they had a DK weight um, and I needed the the um, Aaron and I liked it uh, the the feel of it and I even thought because there is a pattern that I want to do that is um, fingering weight that I could buy that. And and it, this store is a little bit further away from my, my house, but because I had to go to St. John's, it was not that bad. So we went there. And of course, because I went there, I didn't find the yarn that I wanted, but I found this that is also from Leakin and Lace. It's mohair, right? Marsh mohair. 
So I bought, I have three of this, and I got three of this. I was there, right? I needed to buy something. And I found this, this is Corydale that I have knitted a three ply long ago. And I even have a little bit more, but by now, I don't know if I want to, to spin it. I even spun in a different spinning wheel and, and everything. But I'm thinking that maybe these two together will look good. They're not the same color completely because I did a crock pot dye and, and I wanted it to be different. But you can see that some have more red than others. And I have a good quantity here because they're not very thick, so I don't know. And I still have some of this game that worst scenario, I could do more. But I'm not 100% sure, mainly with the darker reds. I thought maybe I can dye some of that yellow and then have like a, a light yellow. And then have this with that yarn. I don't know. So, so this is something for the future. I bought it just because I was there. And, you know, you want to promote everybody's business. But the good thing is that they, had, they have a lot of... She, she, the owner is from England. And she has a lot of English yarn. And she has a lot of Mary Wall. And she has all the books, I think. At least I saw many, many books. And she has Mary Wallen yarn too. I wish I, I knew that earlier because then I would have bought from her instead of ordering from the UK. But um, the good thing is that if I run out of the any of the collars, I can always go there and get something. And she had this Jameson Smith in promotion. This is lace. I think what I have is jumper, but it's okay. It's because once I, I went to a store in Halliburton, Halliburton, I think it was Halliburton, and I bought five different colors of Jameson Smith. And so I have five colors that I could make a, a hat, and I decided that I will, I bought two more to, to put some gray in it because the colors were not enough. So let's see how it will work. So I got two. They were on, on a special, I think it was $6 and something, because it had 30% discount. So I got two just to use with the other ones. And what I noticed too is the Jameson Smith um, lace is much softer than the, um, the Jameson Smith uh, jumper. So... You know, you gotta try, you gotta try. So that's pretty much it. Um, that's what I have been doing. I've been working almost exclusively on Mihai's sweater because I want to start other sweaters. I don't know if I will try to finish some of my working projects first, the old ones. I was also watching a new podcast. I forgot their name. Um, and they have a year-round going on um, meet along that is for you to finish your old podcast, old projects, and then they give a prize every month. Um, I think that's motivating. So I might get some of my old projects just to have something old finished anyway. But that's it. Um, Today is the 29th of April, so Eastern Friday. And this is March. What did I say? Oh, sorry. My husband is telling me I said April. No, this is March, 29th of March. And um, so it's, it's Easter. I hope you all have lots of chocolates and better than chocolates, lots of new yarn. <laughs> If you're watching this and you have a knitter in your life, don't give her chocolates. Or give her chocolates, but give her some yarn together. Okay? I wish you all a very good Eastern and see you soon. Bye.